characters really, really know how to steal a scene. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 epic movie entrances. For this list, we're taking a look at film scenes featuring some pretty impressive character introductions. Whether they're appearing for the first time or finally meeting the film's protagonist, these characters help set the stage for what's to come. To freedom. To the Black Pearl. Plus, who doesn't like to see their favorite characters step on the scene like a boss? Number 10, Honey Rider, Dr. No. Since this is the first in the James Bond movie franchise, audiences weren't yet expecting ridiculously beautiful women to throw themselves willy-nilly at the British spy. Make underneath the mango tree. Especially not clad in bikinis. So when Honey Rider, played by the lovely Ursula Andress, emerged from the ocean in this iconic scene, she revolutionized 007 movies and the silver screen. The Bond girl's entrance wasn't just epic, it left an indelible impression on film audiences for decades, and helped establish the Bond girl legacy. I'm just looking. Stay where you are. I promise I won't steal your shells. I promise you you won't either. It also showed us that a dagger is the perfect accessory for fun times at the beach. I can assure you my intentions are strictly honorable. Number 9. Captain Jack Sparrow, Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. The first glimpse we get of Captain Sparrow, he's approaching a dock aboard a ship that is rapidly sinking. And, while this definitely wouldn't be the last we'd see from the curiously entertaining character, his entrance is definitely one that stands out. As Jack's vessel makes its way to the dock, it's almost fully submerged, allowing him to step from the mast onto dry land without missing a step. It's a more graceful approach than one would expect from a pirate that just narrowly avoided drowning to death in the ocean. What? Hold up there, you! It's a shilling to tie up your boat on the dock. Number 8. Tina Carlyle, The Mask. Hold the phone. Killer. At 3 o'clock. This comic book turned movie introduced us to Cameron Diaz in her first feature film performance. And her movie entrance was so epic that it essentially launched her entire film career. Great. I will hold anything you want. Diaz plays Tina Carlyle, a sultry lounge singer who also happens to be the girlfriend of a notorious gangster. She's also managed to capture the fancy of Stanley Ipkiss, the mask's alter ego and lowly bank employee. That's an interesting time, Mr. Ipkiss. Stanley Ipkiss. Tina Carlyle, pleased to meet you. The pleasure's all mine. Carlisle visits Ipkiss at his job, and her slow motion entrance is topped off with a hair flip that serves to remind you that you never would have had a chance. Number 7, John Doe, 7. Detective. This 90s smash hit was chock full of gruesome surprises and soul crushing plot twists. It also featured Kevin Spacey, who played John Doe a painfully calm and frighteningly even-keeled serial killer who always seems to be one step ahead of the police. Detective! You're looking for me. Doe went on a killing spree that was over a year in the making, all while eluding police detection. Get out! Get down! On your stomach, you piece of shit! Now! All the way! All the way, fucker! Down! Faster! 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 
It wasn't until he calmly strode into the police department to surrender that it seemed the jig was finally up. I'd like to speak to my lawyer, please. But the fact that he'd cut off his own fingertips should have been an indication that there was more to come. He cuts the skin off the tips of his fingers. That's why we couldn't find one single usable print in his apartment. Looks like he's been doing it for quite some time. Number six, The Terminator, Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Whenever lightning starts to strike and the scenery randomly catches on fire, you know something major is about to go down. In this follow-up to the original hit movie, our hero makes a grand entrance. A deviation from the butt cheeks we got in the first movie, we're presented with a time sphere containing the T-800, the killing machine from the first Terminator movie that's been reconfigured to be a bodyguard for the young John Connor. And considering that a newer, shinier killing machine has been dispatched to murder the young Connor, a time sphere containing a good guy cyborg has never been more necessary. I need your clothes, your boots, and your motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> and what about that bar fight to get clothes? Pretty bad to the bone if you ask us. Number five, the Joker, the Dark Knight. So why do they call him the Joker? I heard he wears makeup. Makeup? Yeah, to scare people. You know, war paint. Heath Ledger's brilliant turn as the sociopath with a smile gave audiences a lot of memorable moments in this second installment of Christopher Nolan's Batman series. Come on, come on, I want you to do it, I want you to do it, come on! But his introduction as the Joker, a criminal with some dangerous plans for Gotham, is what lets us know that he was about to blow this role out of the park. All right, everybody, hands up, hands down! The film opens to a bank robbery, with a group of armed robbers donning clown masks as they make quick work hauling loot from a bank vault. Over the course of the crime, members of the group kill other members until only one remains. Boss told me when the guy was done, I should take him out. <laughs> one less share, right? Funny, he told me something similar. <laughs> no, no! And when one of them pulls off his mask to leave some final words with an injured bank manager, that's when we get our first glimpse at an icon in the making. What do you believe in, huh? What do you believe in? I believe. Whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you a stranger. Number four, Hannibal Lecter, The Silence of the Lambs. He's past the others. The last cell you keep to the right. The first rule of law enforcement is to always keep a serial killer on deck in case you need help solving a difficult case. Believe me, you don't want Hannibal Lecter inside your head. Okay, maybe not, but it is in this case. Said helpful killer happens to be the not at all creepy or intimidating Hannibal Lecter, played by Anthony Hopkins. Good morning. When the FBI has run out of leads in the case of yet another serial killer who likes to make women skin coats, they seek Lecter's aid in determining the killer's next move. You're one of Jack Crawford's, aren't you? I am, yes. FBI agent Clarice Starling, played by Jodie Foster, is dispatched to consult with Lecter directly. Good nutrition's given you some length of bone, but you're not more than one generation from poor white trash, are you, Agent Starling? And that's when we see him in all of his disturbingly manipulative glory in solitary quarters that seem like they're probably not safe enough for her or even for the audience. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. Number three, the T-Rex, Jurassic Park. It's a movie about dinosaurs. So we knew we'd get to see some of them in the film. Maybe it's the power trying to come back on. 
What we probably weren't expecting was how absolutely terrifying they would be on screen. Where's the goat? At first, it's all fun and games, when an intrepid CEO invites his grandchildren to visit him at an incredible theme park featuring dinosaurs regenerated from ancient DNA. Of course, things go awry when corruption within the ranks sets off a series of events that allows the dinosaurs to roam and hunt freely. What should have been a peaceful automated tour for two kids turns into a face-to-eyeball confrontation with a hungry T-Rex. And gives us an introduction to an extremely fearsome predator in its element. Number 2. Darth Vader Star Wars Episode 4 A New Hope. There'll be no one to stop us this time. Back before audiences were introduced to Anakin Skywalker, we got Darth Vader in all of his throat crushing glory. The Death Star plans are not in the main computer. Where are those transmissions you intercepted? What have you done with those plans? This epic saga of revolution, redemption, romance, and convoluted family issues was chock full of battles between good and not so good. If this is a consular ship, where is the ambassador? We first meet Darth Vader in the aftermath of a gun battle between rebels and a band of stormtroopers with horrendous aim. With Darth Vader emerging from the cloud of gunfire, never has a billowing cape inspired more dread. Without even uttering a word, you know that this dude is most likely evil and he definitely means business. Before we introduce our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. Number one, the chest-bursting alien, Alien. Terrific, next silly question. <laughs> there's making a grand entrance, and then there's killing your host body during a light-hearted meal among co-workers. I remember some horrible dream about smothering it. In this sci-fi scarefest, Sigourney Weaver plays Ripley, one of seven crew members trapped aboard a spaceship with a vicious alien on a murderous rampage. She and the rest of the crew respond to a distress call. And after one of them survives an attack in a den of alien eggs, they discover that one of the creatures has made it on board. Not one for subtlety. The alien makes its presence known to the crew and the audience alike in one of the most iconic character entrances in movie history. Oh God! <laughs> oh, no, don't, don't touch it! Don't touch it! Do you agree with our list? What do you think is the most epic movie entrance? Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. For more entertaining top 10s published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.
Now, uh, how, how about that account, huh?